Well, we're continuing in uh, the Epistle of James, and uh, I am today using the authorized version. Um, sometimes I use one of the others. It's only sometimes some of the words are easier uh, to explain if you use a slightly more modern translation. After all, uh, while I'm more familiar with the King James, uh, the authorized version, it is written in an older English, but I do understand the English. However, for some of you, sometimes it's easier in one of the more modern translations. We're looking at this epistle of James, and uh, reading in the second chapter, I find it's quite interesting the way that James is writing, and he's actually writing as if he was one of the 12 apostles, but um, although there was an apostle James, most people do believe that this James was actually the brother of Jesus. And I'm bearing that in mind when I read what he says. <laughs> he says, brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. It's not just what he's saying about the respect of persons, that's how you treat people, but it's the way he's actually describing the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. It's a very interesting description. Um, there are many ways of describing the Lord, but um, it's not very often uh, someone does describe him as the Lord of glory. Anyway, what he's saying is that in verse 2, if there comes someone into your assembly, a man with a gold ring, wearing very fine clothes, and there also comes in a poor man who's badly dressed, and if we respect more the one that wears the fine clothes than the one that's uh, wearing the poor clothes, uh, this doesn't really apply very much, I must say, in uh, modern days, because when I was growing up, when you went to church, you did wear your, your Sunday best. <laughs> we tended to grow up with a, a Sunday suit and a weekday suit. Um, and, uh, of course, when I say that, um, because as a young man, age 17, I was actually working in a bank in the city of London, there was a very strict uniform. You had to go in a suit and a tie, and um, most of them wore a special hat, which I refused to do, and you carried a rolled umbrella. It was, uh, in those days, it was, <laughs> it was a uniform, and I used to walk across London Bridge uh, to where the bank was, and it, 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 we all dressed the same. It's quite funny in that sense. Um, but here, uh, what James is looking at is in the day when there was a major difference between the way people were dressed today, sadly, and I, I say this sadly, um, I don't really like to see people in church dressed too casually. <laughs> I'm making a point of that because I don't think we do have need some respect for the Lord that we worship. And um, as I say to people, if you were going to meet 
an important person. I mean, people these days, even if you go and visit a lawyer or a solicitor, tend to dress a little bit more respectfully. You wouldn't go in in uh, shorts and a t Well, I hope you don't. <laughs> but what James is talking about is not so much in respect of the clothing, although he uses that as an illustration, um, in the sense that if someone comes in looking apparently in a better position, um, having more money, that if you treat that person because of their money in a better way than you do with the poorer person, then you're guilty of judgment. You're judging because you're judging that God will favor a person because of their position rather than someone who's poor. But, you know, this is actually completely contradictory to the word of God. Because what James is saying here is very clear. He says that if we judge people from their outward appearance, then we are guilty of judgment. We're, we're judging a person simply by their appearance. And uh, God doesn't judge us by our appearance. And this is why James on, goes on to say, and if you look at uh, verse 5, hearken, my beloved brethren, Hasn't God chosen the poor of this world who are rich in faith and who are heirs of the kingdom which he's promised to those that love him? And so what James is pointing out is that in God's sight, he's not looking at just our outward appearance, but what he's looking at is our heart. And that's why he refers and says, God has chosen the poor of this world who are rich in faith. Not rich in clothes, in money, not because you've got a big bank balance or because you, you drive a, a very expensive car or because you live in a very expensive house. God judges you not by the outward appearance. God's judgment is in your heart because so often it is true that those who have little can in their hearts, love God more because when it comes to heavenly things, <laughs> when it comes to heavenly things, when you stand before the Lord on Judgment Day, uh, your bank account doesn't have any influence on the judgment nor the car that you might drive or the house that you might live in. Uh, people actually uh, comment on me because... Um, Although, yes, I, I do have a decent car because uh, I got sick of uh, driving old cars and many, many times when I was preaching, uh, my car would break down on the way to... Pre no, no, you, that used to happen to me. And sometimes I've actually arrived at, at my destination for preaching on the back of a tow truck. <laughs> that, in the end, I realized that didn't glorify God uh, because the chances were that, one, I would have difficulty in getting there for the meeting and two, how was I going to get home? <laughs> but no, when we stand before the Lord, there's nothing to do with our outward appearance. It's, and you're going to see a little bit more as we develop this, it's very much God sees us and the richness that we have is based on our faith and, as we shall see, how we live out that faith. <laughs> 